good afternoon everyone so welcome back to another session of reading ielts okay so we have covered almost three sections on reading test and today also i came up come up with a new reading material and today we'll discuss the basics of reading as well as i'll do a test demonstration for you okay so uh, we'll start with the basics again i'll explain it once again for uh, the beginners well ielts reading test comprises of 40 questions and it long lasts for 60 minutes one hour and for uh, academic module or academic test takers it will be three passages and 40 questions and for general category or those who are looking for work visa or those who are looking for migration they used to prefer general ILTS and for them it is three sections and five text okay so let's uh, go a bit deeper into uh, academic as well as general reading so many people used to ask so what is the difference between academic reading and general reading so i'll uh, brief it for you so as i mentioned there will be three sections and three passages well each section contains one long test a descriptive passage a factual text or an argumentative piece so these are mostly taken from journals magazine newspapers so it will be something related to educational background it will be based on an educational context so the vocabulary as well as the sentences will be difficult for you to comprehend and understand so that is the basic difference between general and academic reading academic academic reading is more based on educational text okay so that will be taken from books journals magazines newspapers and uh, other text materials okay and again the timing it is uh, for 60 minutes it lasts for 60 minutes and you have you don't have any extra time to answer or transfer your answers to the answer sheet for uh, you know for uh, IELTS listening test there will be 10 minutes to transfer your answers but for reading there will be no extra time so you will be you have to finish all your answer all finish all your questions as well as you have to transfer your answers within this stipulated time allocated okay all right so moving to the three sections there will be one passage in each session where you'll be getting 13 to 14 questions so each question is worth one point and your final score is calculated based on the number of correct answers and there will be no negative marks for the answers so you can freely write your answers even when you are not confident about your answer okay then for general reading obviously there will be the time will be similar and the number of questions are also the same and there will be three sections as i mentioned earlier but here in first and two sec first and second sessions you will have two texts based on a daily life situation or workplace related instructions or it can be the, something like a user manual so uh, those we encounter in our daily life those will be information that we encounter in our daily life so the general training reading test also have three sections and five text and these sections contain a variety of texts such as notices advertisements brochures newspapers and instructional materials which are typically we encounter in our daily life okay so the timing is same there there will be 60 minutes for you to complete your answers and there will be no extra time to transfer your answers okay so moving to the different question types so we have already covered all these types and details and we have done uh, with examples also but i'll repeat it once again for the newcomers well uh, we have a variety of question types uh, to evaluate your reading skills and the question types are multiple choice questions so we have multiple choice questions with multiple answers and multiple choice questions with single answer so you have to choose the correct shopping option from the list of choices and always keep in mind that they'll discuss all three or four options given there okay so there will be all uh, three or four options so you have to choose this correctly and multiple choice is the most difficult task people used to find um, when it comes to your reading test then moving to next question type true false not given questions so you'll be given uh, different statements in your question so you have to 
uh, compare these statements with the paragraph and whether you, you have to check for whether the information given is there in the paragraph or not. If the information matches with the information in the paragraph, then it will be true. And the information contradicts the information given in the passage, it will be false. And there is no information, then it will be not given. So mostly people used to get confused between not given and false. So uh, if you want to refer it, then you can just go to the previous uh, videos where I have already explained such questions and how to answer those questions. Then the next question type is matching information where you will get a list of items with specific information in the text and you have to match it with the other column. Then matching headings. This is also a difficult task for most of the uh, students I have seen where you will get a list of headings, maybe 10 or 11 headings, and you have to choose the correct heading, heading for each paragraph. So that is quite difficult and sometimes uh, uh, we may be get confused between these headings. Like we may feel like each heading should match with different paragraphs or each paragraph can match with different headings. So it is important you now to go for your keywords just to look for and understand the meaning of the paragraph rather than looking for just keywords when finding out this matching headings. And matching features, again you have to match a list of statements or descriptions with specific sections or paragraphs in the text. Moving to next set of questions. Uh, sentence completion or summary completion where you have to complete sentences based on information from the text. So uh, when you do this sentence completion or summary completion, make sure that the sentences are grammatically correct. So once again, I'll tell you, make sure that the sentences are grammatically correct and you have to look for synonyms when doing these questions. You may not be able to find the same word in your text. Sometimes it can happen, but most of the time it will be the information given will be paraphrased or they'll use synonyms to describe the same things. Okay, so you have to look for synonyms as well as sentences with the same meaning. All right, then summary completion, there'll be note completion, table completion, follow chart completion. So you'll complete summaries, notes, tables, and flow charts with information from the text. And diagram labeling. So there'll be uh, illustrations based on the information provided in the text. So you have to label it accordingly. So the diagram labeling is another question type. And the last one is short answer questions where you have to answer questions in the form of short phrases, one or two sentence, one or two words using from the uh, text. Okay, so when you answer short questions, make sure that you have read the instructions carefully. So they will be given one word only, one word uh, and a number, one word or a number, no more than two words. So you have to look for the instructions carefully before answering the question. Okay, so these are the different question types and we are moving to the passage. And today I just picked a general reading for uh, those uh, who are attending general module because uh, in the previous videos I have taken a text from academic module and today I, am, um, I just changed and uh, took a passage from general test. Okay, so moving to the text. Okay, I think it is um, quite visible and readable for all of you. Well, okay. So uh, those who are seeing, watching my video, uh, if you can just uh, take a pen and paper because I'm going to explain how to do a reading test or how to approach a reading test. So there'll be different approaches or it depends on uh, every person, each person. So, uh, but what I do is I'll explain and if you are able to do along with me, that will be great. Okay, so you can take a pen and paper with you so we can uh, do it together. All right, so look at the passage here and what you have to do in the first is you have to read the instructions carefully. So you have to, you can just read the instructions along with me. You should spend about 20 minutes on questions 1 to 14, which are based on reading passages below. 
So as I mentioned, for general candidates, each section will be having two passages except part three. Okay. So write questions to uh, write answers to questions in boxes one to fourteen on your answer sheet. So there will be uh, there is a text given the best travel wallets and based on that we have different uh, features of different wallets there okay so we can go to the different questions question one to eight based on the text above and what I do is like you can uh, either read the passage first or you can read the questions first but what i would like to start with uh, reading the passage okay so i do read the passage first and i'll just jot down what points i get from this passage so what that is the way i do my reading test and i am explaining how to do it okay so i would like to start with reading the passage and what i do is i'll jot down the points i could uh, relate or what information the paragraph provides okay so I just uh, took a paper okay so reading uh, the first paragraph Kipling travel doc travel document holder so this is uh, an explanation about uh, a different wallet so we'll read it this zip around wallet comes in five different patterns and is made of nylon okay so from this sentence itself we could identify what information is given in this paragraph paragraph about this wallet is what material used to make this wallet okay so here it is given us made of nylon so we could just not jot it down somewhere around this reading passage itself so you can those who are taking um, pen and paper based test you can just jot it down with your pencil and if you want you can just erase it after your reading test so obviously you can just uh, jot it down there so uh, in the first paragraph it is given what material used to make this bag or the wallet and then it is given it is all it also has a space where users can put a pen pockets for cards and id window and a pocket for change so what it can hold okay so these are the information given in paragraph a then paragraph b we are moving to the next paragraph this is a waterproof wallet so it's a valid point right it is a waterproof wallet so this is one of the features of this wallet this is a waterproof wallet you can just underline the keyword so when you read this passage or when you read the questions so it, it depends on each person as i mentioned earlier so if you are either you are reading this passage first or maybe uh, the questions first whatever it may be you could underline the keywords okay so if you want you can underline the keywords for the reference so obviously it will help you to navigate through the questions very easily so you can just underline the keyword waterproof wallet okay so it is one of the features waterproof wallet which uses anti-radio frequency identification material so your financial details will be safe so the next feature given is about the safety and security it provides okay so we have two points uh, we got two points from here and apart from that it is black with smart sky blue finishing touches and has a small internal compartment a smartphone pocket and an external pocket it can fit two passports so uh, what it can hold again so here it is given two passports so you have to pay attention to these minor details when it comes to general reading task as well as for academic too but for general reading task it, it plays a very important role so you can just look for this tiny keywords it can fit two passports and uh, the different uh, features also given there and in the third paragraph then you can see a wallet so slim it could easily pass for a small notebook the inside compartment labels identifying each separate section all have silver lettering on them so for this wallet there is a silver imprint on them in a silver color the wallet has a special coating which makes it easy to wipe anything like sand off so wipe it uh, wipe it if it gets dirty so it is an advantage of this wallet and go moving to the fourth one this wallet comes in smooth black leather and is no bigger than a passport but roaming enough for any insurance documents or flight tickets so here also they have given an information about the material used for making this wallet 
a small small navy blue pen is supplied inside so additional feature or additional thing that's supplied along with the uh, wallet is also mentioned then moving to the next one this plain travel wallet opens up to reveal pockets in various color labels cards passports and tickets as well as others left blank for extras so it has several compartments to add or to keep anything extra if you have okay then it comes in a handy downstream bag so it is an added facility or you can keep this wallet in a downstream bag it also comes with a comes in a handy downstream bag so you can keep it safely inside the bag so these are the information we can uh, recollect from this one and moving to the next one go travel organizer where you can see the black wallet features seven slip-in cart compartments two small interior zip pockets and a load of other slip-in compartments it can fit at least four passports so it can fit at least four passports in the previous uh, one maybe uh, i think it is in b uh, paragraph b we have seen that uh, a ballot can include two passports and here it is more than at least four passports so it can accommodate more than four okay then go travel blue travel wallet this is a simple very reasonably priced wallet it is made of pvc plastic so here it is also mentioned the material used for manufacturing this wallet and will suit for suit those who like a wallet that is easy to sport so uh, it is easy for us to find it from a big luggage so as it is made up of pvc plastic and it comes in a range of bright colors with a white holiday related design on the front so we have come across uh, to information uh, related to imprinting or the prints on the wallet so one it one it is given as silver prints in all the compartments uniformly where here it is given us multicolored bright colors multicolored with a white holiday related design on the front okay and it has five compartments that can fit a passport so it can just fit a single pa passport with other cards and tickets so we have just read all the paragraphs thoroughly and we just um, jot down all those points and we we understood what all things are mentioned in each paragraph now we are moving to the question so the first question is and before that you can just read the instructions look at the seven reviews of travel wallets a to g below for which travel wallet are the following statements true write the correct letter a to g in boxes one to eight on your answer sheet and you have to read the other other instruction carefully you have to take it very carefully you may use any letter more than once so you can use b multiple times or c multiple times so you can use any letter more than once if it is necessary okay so the first question this wallet will suit people who prefer natural materials so when we come across the different reviews we have encountered three paragraphs or three wallets where they mentioned the material it is made up of so the first one is nylon the second one is natural leather and the third one is pvc plastic okay so we can move to this paragraphs again so where we have read that the first one it is in the paragraph a and is made of nylon it is not a natural material so obviously it won't be the right answer then uh, we saw that in pa paragraph d this wallet comes in smooth black leather and paragraph g paragraph g it is given us pvc plastic it is not a natural material to make or uh, to manufacture a wallet so the answer will be d where it is mentioned as this wallet comes in smooth black leather so the answer is d okay so when you read and when you just jotted down the points we come across it is easy for us to spot the right answer by comparing this so if you are not reading it for the first time if you are just going through the questions and if you are looking for the keywords in the question itself passage itself it will take a lot more time so if you read the passage first and if you if you are able to jot down all this information together in the first itself you'll you can find the answers very easily and it will reduce 
the total time consumed for answering your for completing your questions okay all right so the next question it is uh, users of this ballot do not need to worry about taking it out in the rain so we have already read the paragraphs and i mentioned it is waterproof okay so in paragraph b we have seen this is a waterproof ballot so the answer is b it is so easy for us to find the information as there is no information about water or any other uh, um, information given so it is quite easy for to locate the same information then parts of the inside the inside of this ballot have categories printed on them in one color okay so internal compartments we have seen interior uh, zip pockets in paragraph f then internal compartments in different paragraphs but uh, what they mention about colors so we have uh, in paragraph three we could see all each separate section all have silver lettering on them each internal compartment have the same silver lettering on them then apart from that we could see in paragraph g there, the, there is a mentioning of range of bright colors with a white holiday related design on the front but they, they are mentioning about the imprint on the front rather than the internal compartments so the answer is so the answer is c so it is given in the paragraph c where all the inside of this ballot have different categories where the all where all these categories printed on them in one color that is silver color silver color imprints okay then the fourth one this ballot would suit someone who needs to keep several passports together so as i mentioned earlier there are um mention about passports in paragraph g it is given us uh, it fit a passport then paragraph b it is given us it can fit two passports and in paragraph f it is given us it can fit at least four passports so at least four passport means minimum four passports it can accommodate and it can accommodate more there is no there is more room for accommodating many passports so the answer is so the answer is f okay so the answer is f all right then paragraph the question number five something is provided for writing okay so we have uh, something is provided for writing so obviously we could uh, look for the information like a notebook or it can be a pen or it can be a pencil so those are the things that we use for writing right so we could look for some information related to that so in paragraph uh, c there, there is uh, given a ballot so slim it could easily pass for a small notebook but we have to carry it right so we have to carry if we have a notebook it can easily fit in this ballot and then paragraph d we could see a small navy blue pen is supplied inside so it is already given along with the ballot it is an additional feature of the ballot a new new uh, a blue navy blue pens pen is also added with the ballot so the answer is five answer is d where uh, a pen is also provided so uh, uh, the question is something is provided for writing and the answer is d again the question six this will suit people who want to be able to find the document valid easily in their language so we have already mentioned this information so um okay in paragraph G, you could see this is a simple, very reasonably priced ballot. It is made of PVC plastic and will suit for those who like a ballot that is easy to support. I have already mentioned while reading this paragraph. So the answer is G. And seventh one, something to keep this ballot in is provided. So it is obviously paragraph E. It comes in a handy downstring bag where you can keep this ballot in. So the answer is E. And the last one is this ballot has been specially made to prevent people detecting the numbers on any bank cards etc inside it so it is all about the safety and security so where we have encountered it or across this information in the paragraphs it is in the first paragraph 
a second paragraph where it is mentioned as this is a waterproof wallet which uses and the radio frequency identification material so your financial details will be safe okay so your financial details will be safe so what financial details bank cards okay so here it is given us detecting the numbers on any bank cards it will be safe with the second wallet so the answer is b okay so this is how you have to find out the answers so easily so uh, it is uh, it takes a lot of time because i am explaining it to you otherwise it takes less time compared to the other strategy and uh, again i am telling you it depends on person to person but if you are able to do this way uh, you'll be able to make um, some more time for doing the um, other question types like uh, matching headings those will be difficult for you to answer okay so moving to the next passage so uh, here it is given uk rail services how do i claim for my delayed train okay so we'll uh, this time we'll try for the another strategy like uh, reading the questions first i'm moving to the paragraphs the question given are do the following statements do the following statements agree the information given in the text above so in boxes 9 to 14 you are on your answer sheet you have to write whether it is true false not given and the conditions are if the statement agrees with the information given in the passage then it is true if the statement contradicts the information given it will be false and if there is no information on this it will be not given okay so the first question the system for claiming compensation varies from one company to another okay so it will be in the uh, order itself so you can just uh, look for the answer in the first paragraph itself generally if you have been delayed on a train journey you may be able to claim compensation but train companies all have different rules so it can be confusing to work out what you are entitled to so the information given in the question is paraphrased in a different way each train company have has different rules so obviously it will be confusing to work out what you are entitled to so it is given in a paraphrased way the system for claiming compensation varies from one company to another so the answer is true both paragraph as well as the uh, question has the same information so it is true and question number 10 under delay repay a train company will only provide compensation if it caused the delay okay so you can look for the keywords under delay repay then a train company will only so you have to look for this keywords only only provide competition if it caused the delay if the train company is responsible for the delay then then only they'll give compensation okay so read further uh, reading further the type of delay you can claim for depends on whether the train company runs a delay repay scheme or a less generous older style scheme delay repay is a train operator scheme to compensate passengers when trains are late and the train company will pay out even if it was not responsible for the delay okay even if it was not responsible for the delay so the answer is false so what we have uh, gone through in the question given is uh, they will be only giving compensation if it is from their part if it if the delay happens from their part but what it is given in the passage it is even if it was not the responsible if even if the train company is not responsible for the delay they will give compensation okay so the answer contrary the information contradicts to each other so the answer is false okay then moving to the next question under delay repay underground and other train companies give exactly the same amounts of money in compensation okay so we can look for underground and other train companies give exactly exactly so these are the some of the keywords you have to uh, give stress on only exactly okay so under delay repay uh, uh, underground and other train companies give exactly the same amounts of money in competition okay so we have to read further okay the scheme varies between companies but up to 2016 most paid 50 percent of the 
single ticket cost for 30 minutes delay and 100% for an hour. On the London Underground, you get a full refund for 15 minute delays. So it depends and it varies with different railway system. Okay, for uh, Underground Railway, it is different from other ones so uh, there is uh, but up to 2016 most paid 50% of a single ticket for uh, 30 minutes delay and 100% for an hour on the London underground it is entirely different from what he, what we have read and read about the other two they get a full refund for 15 minute delays so the information given contradicts again so the answer is false and the delay repay underground and other train companies give exactly not not the same some give it 50 percent and some uh, repay the 100 percent and uh, for underground railway system they will give a full refund for 15 minutes delay so it is exact it is not exactly the same amount of money in compensation so the answer is false then moving to the next question an increasing number of train companies are willing to pay compensation for problems they are not responsible for okay so um, an increasing number of train companies are willing to pay compensation for problems they are not responsible for so till we uh, read we haven't find any information related to that companies that do not use delay repair and still use the older scheme will not usually pay compensation if probably if the problem is considered to be out of their control so they haven't mentioned anything about such schemes or such facilities available so the answer is not given okay then the 13th one it is doubtful whether companies using the oldest scheme will provide compensation if a delay is caused by a strike okay it is doubtful whether companies using the oldest scheme will provide compensation if delay is caused by a strike okay so uh, there are some uh, likely so there are some situations given uh, like where you are like unlikely to get compensation so you won't get compensation under this circumstances where accidents involving people getting onto the line illegally then gas leaks or fires in buildings next to the line which were not caused by a train company then the last one is the strike action so if the delay occurs due to strike action, it is doubtful whether the companies using the older scheme will provide a competition, compensation, sorry, compensation. So the information given is given matches with the information in the passage. Obviously, the answer is true. Okay. So it is really doubtful if the companies will companies be able to provide a compensation if the delay is caused by strike. And the last question is passengers may receive compensation in the form of a train voucher if they forget to request cash. Okay, passengers may receive compensation in the form of a train voucher if they forget to request cash. Okay, so in the last uh, paragraphs, since 2016, rail, okay, so um, in the sec uh, third paragraph from the last, so you could see national rail conditions of travel state that you are entitled to compensation in the same form that you paid for the ticket. So in what mode of, uh, in what more, what form of uh, compensation or what mode of uh, method or what method you paid for the ticket, you'll get this compensation in the same form. Some train companies are still paying using rail vouchers, which they are not, which they are allowed to do if you are not asked for a cash refund. So if you are not uh, requesting for a cash refund of you or if the passenger is um, not able to or forget to request for a cash repayment, so obviously, it is uh, uh, the passengers will likely to receive it in the form of a train voucher the, rather than in cash so the information given is the same and the answer is true okay so uh, you can try both these approaches first you can uh, or either you can read the paragraph first and understand and jot down the keywords and look for the information that will save a lot of time or you can just look for the keywords such as only exactly so you can look for such keywords in your question as well as uh, keyword underline the keywords and look for the passage so these are the two strategies that we have discussed uh, here one is one is reading the passage first and the other one is looking for the questions first so try these two approaches on which 
which one do you find it more convincing or more comfortable as well as time saving for you you can choose that one and complete your reading test and if you have any queries obviously you can feel free to uh, ask in the comment section okay thank you so much for um, watching so i'll be back with another session thank you